Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a bit of a chance to have a snack and move around a bit. Um, I'm really excited about um, this upcoming afternoon, um, and I hope uh, that it will also be within the theme of all of this interconnectedness. It really stood out to me with all of this um, interconnectedness, starting from Dr. Waters' presentation on Indigenous worldviews and connection to our wider community and our connection to the land or um, to our breakout rooms discussion of the Okanagan Charter or whether it was having buy-in from leadership or um, and around the university. So I thought that was such a fantastic start to our morning as well. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce you to two fantastic student leaders who will provide us with their reflections of the morning sessions as well. Um, so first we have Sarah Brockway, um, who is completing a doctorate in educational leadership at Brussels Sage College in the United States. Um, and then we also have Veronica Neosen pursuing a Bachelor's of Environmental Studies at the University of Waterloo in Canada. I will hand it over to you, Sarah, to take it away. Thank you so much, Georgia. I hope you all can hear me um, all right. Um, yes, and what a morning it has been being a part of this international symposium. And Georgia, you said exactly my thoughts, this feeling of interconnection, right? And summarizing what I felt. Um, President Ono said, you can't solve the issue of health promotion without understanding the interconnection and the multi-dimensions of wellness. And President Watts said the interconnection is critical for this work to be done. And Vice Chancellor Gillies also talked about distributed leadership, connecting, working between silos, connecting not only the staff and faculty, but students. And this made me reflect on my own personal research. I've been researching over the past years the role of leadership in implementing the Okanagan Charter within um, three institutions in the United States. So I've been looking at the beliefs, the actions of leaders that flows over to policies and outcome measures. And we've heard a lot about those four themes um, throughout this morning's sessions. But really that interconnectionness between the three main points of the person, place, and planet is what stood out to me this morning. And we all have our own personal beliefs of what it means to be well and health promotion that has brought us here. And we've heard from the national networks and that broader aspect of community or the place and the importance of connecting across networks and across campuses within our own personal um, place and greater place. Um, but we started today really looking at the bigger picture of the planet. And I personally, when I started this work, I went from the bottom up looking at personal, then place wellness, and then planetary wellness. And over the course of my study of this work, that's really shift of, of looking at starting at that mother earth as our health system, which Dr. Waters so beautifully explained, and how really if we can't have planetary wellness, we can't work within our communities to shape wellness and health and well-being, and then ourselves as individuals. Um, and my colleague here that I've connected with from Canada, Veronica, has done some wonderful work um, specifically in climate and equity, which we've heard a lot about, um, and that sort of lens. Of, of that multidimensional view of wellness. So I'm gonna throw it over to Veronica. Thank you, Sarah. I echo so many of the sentiments that you've just said. Um, we really have had a fantastic um, morning. There's so much I want to talk about, but I'm, I know we're, we have a time limit, so I will try to be very concise. But um, this piece on climate and health really stood out to me because of my research on the mental toll of climate change. Um, something that really uh, I thought was interesting was when I was doing my research, it seemed as though people were a little bit surprised at like, you know, connecting with nature is a great way to heal. And, you know, hearing um, um, Dr. Shannon Waters this morning just saying, you know, Indigenous peoples have been saying and doing that since forever. So I just really wanted to emphasize that and, and just really think about like, you know, we don't always have to re reinvent the wheel. Like there are some fantastic things being done right now. Um, the second, uh, I guess the, the next couple of things I wanted to talk about is again, back to this piece of like interconnected, interconnectedness and just how um, specifically equity and the socioeconomic determinants of health have come up a lot today. 
um, I had the opportunity to connect with Black, Indigenous, and other racialized students across Canada in some of my work, um, specifically to talk about food insecurity. And it was interesting because a really um, memorable story I heard from a student was, you know, she is an international student. She was required to buy a meal plan. Um, and in that meal plan, there was nothing halal. So she couldn't eat vegetarian food and they wouldn't let her eat, uh, like she couldn't eat the meat. And so they were like, sorry, I can't do anything for you. And so she had to, well, for one thing, she was like starving. Um, and then she, she had to um, get a job to buy more groceries. And so it took, that job took away from like her schooling. And so we talk about this, this piece of, you know, students, like it's not just um, one or two things that are influencing their health. It's really compounding factors. Like it's not just the school, it's not just the workload, it's, it's, are they eating? Um, like, are they financially okay? And I just really wanted to emphasize that example, just because we are talking very broadly today. From a student perspective, I see this stuff happen all the time. And um, I also want to just echo something that, um, um, that, that I heard within the webinar, like, there's, it's not just about, um, we really have to focus on considering where we are, um, within our systems before we can make change that will adequately help the people who need it because you could be making solutions, we could be making solutions that aren't really helping the people who are disproportionately being um, affected. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Veronica and Sarah, for your reflections and um, your great insight into this morning's work and also for sharing that anecdote, um, Veronica, as well. Um, now we've come to the next session where colleagues from around the world will be presenting on their research and practice. Um, you can find descriptions of each presentation and the speaker bios on the link within the chat. Um, you have all also been pre-allocated to one of the 10 presentation rooms. Um, Ryan will press a button and you should automatically be placed in that room. Um, but also inevitably because it is Zoom and it, we are all over the world, something will probably go wrong technologically. So we appreciate your patience in the first few minutes of getting everybody set up. Um, and then after this session, we'll have a short 10 minute break as well. So I'll turn it over to you, Ryan, to take us away.